Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, Saka here with another episode of Kerbal Space Program 1.2 Career Mode. When we last left off, Valentina was able to uh, bring back a ton of science, uh, which I spent here at the um, research and development station whenever it decides to pop up. I got this mid middle tier here. Uh, we got the fuel lines made. Uh, I got uh, the stability inline stabilizer here and some solar panels for us, which will help. We also picked up another mission off camera to explore the moon. And that mission is actually one third of the way done. I would try to record several episodes, but Fraps hasn't been playing very nice with me. So I'm hoping this one is the one that works. And um, I, I crashed that craft. I, I deleted it. Um, with all the science on board so we could go back and actually get it together. What I've done is I put Bob in charge here um, to, to get us to the moon and possibly to Minmus and I brought him so he could reset that materials bay. So without further ado, let's go to the moons! Now launching this craft, um, it's hit or miss, eight times out of ten or three quarters of the time, I'm able to get this into orbit on the first try. Um, but, you know, this uh, this game has a way of making it uh, a tad bit more difficult. Uh, the same craft that you got into orbit one time may not get you into orbit on the next. So I'm just uh, manually flying this thing. We have no uh, stability control because Bob is not a pilot and we cannot engage our SAS. So SAS module might be a really good thing to have so uh, guys like Bob can get into orbit without much trouble and manually flying it. Although Bob's adjusting his headset there, doesn't look like he's even flying the plane or the spacecraft. I am. All right, we'll throttle it a little bit. There we go. We had to get through maximum dynamic pressure right there at the cusp of the, the thickest part of the atmosphere and the uh, next thickest. Oh, Come on, Bob. All right, we lost it. Revert to launch. Like I said, this, this craft can get us into orbit three quarters of the time, uh, manually flying it. It's the way the fuel, um, the fuel unloads, the way the fuel um, exits these tanks. It's all supposed to, to float evenly, and there's a whole fuel diagram in 1.2 that I haven't even messed with yet um, but I just I just keep brute forcing it brute force is the way to go with uh, with a rocket that you know works uh, really well and you know I could add some fins uh, I unlocked the that tier for space plane parts so we definitely got some fins and some control surfaces that we could put on here uh, if worse comes to worse but I know good and well this craft is capable of getting into orbit. I've gotten this craft into orbit four times now, and the uh, craps hasn't played nice with me on any one of them. So, unfortunately, um, well, well I, I'm keeping on doing it. For the love of you guys, for sure. For, for recording an episode and making sure uh, that you guys see our uh, foray to the moon, it's pretty important for me to make sure that you guys see every step of the way, especially if you're following uh, because of a tutorial or a walkthrough sort of thing, so you can see what craft I take to get to the moon and, and other places. We've got a really aggressive angle here on getting into orbit. Let me throttle down a bit. Uh, we're getting some massive heating, and we're picking up a lot of speed as we're exiting uh, this part of the atmosphere. We may be a bit too low uh, spinning our tires in this uh, small part of the atmosphere. But no worse for the wear. We are made, get, gaining a ton of surface speed. Uh, so once it switches to orbit, we'll be able to uh, take a look at that. See our orbital speed. All right, let's go full power. We're about to drop those side tanks. Off they go. And up we go. Let's see how we are doing. 50,000. Yeah, we're sort of, uh, we're burning. There we go, there's our orbit. We're definitely burning a lot of fuel 
sort of fighting this atmosphere, unfortunately. I think I was a bit too shallow, and when you're too shallow, you're fighting the, the atmosphere, and it's not good for anyone. I'll pick up the nose just a touch, trying to get that nose up so we're not um, on fire anymore, preferably. All right, there's 87. That'll be good for us. Let's go ahead and add our maneuver here. No, let's go. Get us our circularization burn, please. 92 and 87 is close enough. Let's get Bob back on course. And then once we get out of the atmosphere, we'll be able to use um, the time acceleration to stop the craft from moving and help Bob turn the craft a bit. We want to burn at 11 seconds. Let's just use our physical time acceleration until we get above 7. D, 1,000. There we go. And now we'll point back to the maneuver node, uh, do a quick time warp, and that will settle the rocket down, like so. And we'll get to 11 seconds on that burn, and old Bob will go full power. And here we go. Only a 300 meter a second burn difference uh, to get up to speed. That's one of the things if you if you, if you have a high altitude coming up, if you get out of the atmosphere, then you spend a lot of speed gaining lateral speed. If you come out shallow, then you have to use a lot of speed to gain altitude. So the sweet spot is right there in the middle. 88 by 86, that is pretty solid. Let's go ahead and set the moon as our target. And what is our inclination difference? Uh, one degree, not bad. Looks like this time around, uh, we will be catching the node, hopefully at the uh, sending descending nodes. That way we don't even have to adjust our orbit at all. All right, so we need to fire a little early. There we go. Now what I'm going for is a pretty large, um, a pretty close periapse that will kick us out to um, Mimesis orbit. And that's fairly close. Um, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But ultimately, the goal is to um, get out to the moon, do our uh, far and near to the moon science, and then we will just need a little bit of fuel to get out to Mimesis so we can collect science from uh, near and close to Mimesis. And I think we'll have enough fuel in this section here to actually land on Mimus and bring a soil sample back. So I upgraded the research and development facility so we could uh, bring a soil sample back. And, you know, we'll, we'll be able to bring back a ton of science that way. Looking for a 21 second burn or thereabouts, here we go. Essentially, we will see the moon rise come up and go for broke. Try to keep it as uh, on the maneuver as I can. Old Bob isn't a pilot, so he isn't able to point at the, the nodes like Jebediah and Valentina will, but we are doing the best we can. All right, let's keep her on target. Once we cross the moon's sphere of influence, we'll be able to start taking science from around the moon uh, we will drop low enough to take uh, science away from moon near orbit and then out to Mimis is our goal. Cut it. 1.9 meter a second difference. Let's see how that does for us. 100,000. Now we can adjust that. Once we uh, get out here, we can add a maneuver and um, let's see what we got. Can we bring that down just a bit? Hundred twenty nine. How about if we just went retrograde just a bit? Can't see what we're doing. There we go. A hundred, one hundred fifty four. All 
That shoots over way too much. Oh, we're looking at the purple, aren't we? Now the purple... Yeah, we're looking at the orange. That's a hundred. That's a hundred. No, I don't guess we're looking at the orange. Where are we looking at? Okay, there's the purple. So we need the purple. 179. There we go. 1,000 meters. Oh crap, such minute adjustments here. Come on, play nice. 9,024, that's good. Let's warp to the next maneuver. Yeah, and it, it's only a half meter a second um, change. Let's go ahead and point prograde. Since it's true prograde, I don't think it matters if we hit it right on the maneuver node or not. We just need to make sure that our speed is close enough. Well, that may have been a tech too much. 243 meters. Yes, we need to go retrograde or we will smash into the surface something awful. Just doing minute adjustments and you saw uh, how little thrust we did really changed that up. So what I'll do is I'll put a thrust limiter on this thing. We'll go back to the craft, right click on it, put the thrust limiter right down to 4.5 and then we will um, do the work here. 3,000, 5,000. Let's go for 15 or 16, that's good enough. And then we'll turn the engine all the way back on full throttle. And now we are along for the ride. Let's warp out for a day. The moon should be coming here. Time warp is complete. We'll be crossing into the moon's sphere of influence here in six minutes. Three, two, one. And then once we make that cross, we will see the nav ball change and then we can get to work. There's the change in the nav ball. Let's get to work on our science. Observe the mystery goo. That's 40. Let's observe the materials bay. There is 100. Let's observe the barometer. That's 48. Let's observe the thermometer. That's 32. Let's do a crew report, another 20, and let's rotate the craft around so we can see uh, Bob work. And then we will do an EVA and get an EVA report. 32 science, excellent. So what I'll have Bob do is take the crew report and then when he gets back in, he'll be able to store the data can we reach the thermometer from here? No, we cannot. All right, let's uh, let's use our jetpack. We'll take the data from the uh, science junior, and then we will reset the materials bay because he is a scientist. We will take the data of the thermometer, go down here to the barometer, take the data here, and then we will get. Uh, to the back side of the uh, goo canister. All right, let me get this point of view. There we go. So now I can see what we're doing. We will collect the data there and restore the goo canister. And Bob will be able to place all of this in the capsule and we will be ready for close lunar science. Grab, please. Store all the experiments and board. All right, so are we indeed 15,000 meters out? 16? All right, let's do it. Let's warp there. We're coming down from the moon. There's our sunshine. Camera's flipping a touch. All right, so let's go retrograde. Actually, it doesn't look like we want to do that. We want to stand pretty much up and down anti or, uh, normal here. 
Just like that. Well, let's let's go to the 90. And then when we get close enough, let's say, is 40 close enough for us to do science near the moon? It is. So we'll keep that experiment. We will log the temperature once more and keep that experiment. We will log the barometer and keep that experiment. Do a crew report and keep that experiment. And then we will be able to EVA, do an EVA report and keep it. We'll store the data. We'll take the data, store it all. Matter of fact, we can observe the mystery goo. Take it. Excellent. Collect the data and reset the canister from here. And then store experiment. And now we are ready to get to Mimis. We have all of our science stored and it looks like we will be uh, leaving on this particular plane. Let's go ahead and get out to Mooner Escape. Watch the surface of the moon zip by. We will be back, moon. Don't you worry about a thing. All right, here we go. Six minutes out. Five, three, two, one. And we'll be back around Kerbin. And we'll select Minmus as our target. That is an eight degree difference in orientation. But if we can catch it, and our apoapsis and ascending node is almost close, if we were to finagle this thing and get it to where we are encountering it um, right there at the anterior node, or the ascending node there, we will be good. Let us right click on it and adjust the uh, orbit time. There we go. Let's see if we can catch it coming around. Oh, I don't like, well, I don't think our orbit is actually affected. There's one. So if we were to burn 75 meters a second in 44 days, we will get to Mimis, and I'm not going to make you wait through that. I'll go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and collect this data while we can. And then we will uh, call it an episode. And then next episode, we will plot our course for uh, Mimis. We will land on Mimis. And we should be ready to get our first soil sample, which is pretty cool stuff. Here we go, collect, take the data. And we will take the thermometer and we will be all set. Take the data there. All right, it's gonna be a long uh, 44 days for Bob, but not for you. Come back tomorrow and we will see what kind of science we can bring back from Minmus. But that is going to do it for me in this episode, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, like, share, and subscribe if you are so bold. And for Bob Kerman, our intrepid scientist, I will see you at Minmus. Take care. <laughs>